there's a purpose in our salvation. You know, God's not just converting us just to give us a heaven stamp and send us on down the road and say, you know, you just do like you want to do until, until you die, until I come. You know, that's not the will of God. You know, the Lord wants to get us to the place that we understand that each one of us, every one of us, are a living temple of the Holy Spirit. How many of you know that? That you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. How many of you also know that the Lord said himself, he said, he who defiles the temple, and this is God speaking through his word. Now, let me settle this before we get going any further. You see this book right here? This is the Lord. <laughs> the only way you're going to make Jesus Lord of your life is to practically put his word first. The only practical way you can make Jesus Lord is to put his word first. If his word's not first, then there's not much chance of you being a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord wants us to be disciples. He wants us to follow him wholeheartedly. Nothing unsurrendered. Nothing not given over to him. Because mark my words and listen very closely. Unsurrendered territory in your heart is the hideout of the devil. You hear what I'm saying? Unsurrendered territory in your heart is the hideout of the devil. Now let me say this too. Each one of you, I said just a minute ago, you have a temple of the Holy Spirit. Now sure, we come together and we are the church gathered together, but you are the church. You are the church. Christ lives in you. He sits on the throne in your heart. You understand? When Christ sits down on the throne in your heart, then rivers of living water can flow out of your belly and you can begin to, to have revelation from God and rhema and all the wonderful things that come from God speaking directly to you. But guess what? When you don't yield to the Holy Spirit and you don't yield to what the Father has for you, then what happens is things go dark. Things get real dark when you refuse to yield to the Word of God, to the written Word of God, and also to the voice of the Holy Spirit in your heart speaking to you. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Now we talk about... I want you to turn with me. Let's, let's just put some word on this instead of just, you know, me telling you. Let's, let's go to uh, John chapter 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word... This is John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yes. The same was in the beginning with God. Now let, let me give you a revelation here. God took every word He had ever spoken, every word He had ever spoken, and He put that word into Mary's womb, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you know that? Amen. This is the revealed Word. This is the Word He chose to put in our hands. This is the written Word of God. This is what we have. This is our seed bag, folks. You get the promises of God. You take one promise that promises you what you need. You get it down into your heart. You rely on it. You believe it. You accept it as yours. And you make it Lord in your life. And what will happen is it will produce the living Savior in your circumstances. Now you hear what I'm saying. The written word put in your heart, received and accepted as the Lord Jesus Christ, will dominate your circumstances. Circumstances do not determine the will of God. How many of you know that? When things go bad and things look, look bad and you go through a struggle... That doesn't mean that God is slapping you upside your head. You understand that? God's not necessarily the one that's causing the problem. God's trying to get you out of the problem. He's not trying to bring you into one. But if you refuse and you rebel, He is going to correct you because He's going to treat you like a son. Now, if you're a son or, or a child of God, God has every right and every responsibility to correct your path if you're heading in the right, wrong direction. You understand? Amen. Now, <clears throat> that book that you're holding in your hand that I gave you, those truths that are in the New Testament or the New Covenant truths are there to help you to see. These are like handholds. These are foundational principles. If you don't get this, you won't get the rest of it. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. 
We have all, every one of us, have fallen and come, and sh come short of the glory of God. Yes. We have failed the Lord. How many, how many of you have mess missed it and failed the Lord? Amen. We've all missed it. That's why we need saving. We need saving from our sin. We need deliverance from the thing that is hindering us from walking in the fullness of what God has for us. Now, <clears throat> somebody said this to me one time. They said, well, you know, God would never do me wrong. God would never hurt me. Listen very closely to me. The word itself in 1 Corinthians says this. It says, He who defiles the temple of the Holy Ghost, God will destroy. Who, who will destroy them? God will destroy them. We're not playing here about, you know, what we can get by with. We're not trying to see how close to the line we can walk and still be saved. That's not our goal. We want to walk as close to the Father as is possible. Now, that means that we take a bath. How many... How many of y'all take a bath just about every day? Amen. How many of you know you've got to get a scrub brush from the Word to take a bath with? And there's a scripture that says this. It says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sin, that God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now that is the Holy Ghost, hub, uh, uh, what do I call it, the scrub brush. Yeah. That's the thing that's going to clean you up. Amen. But if you go without taking record of what you're doing right or wrong, if, if you just say, well, you know, the Lord understands me. He knows I'm a heathen. He knows I'm not, you know, I'm just a soul sinner saved by grace. You know, so I don't have to confess nothing to him. Let me tell you something. You need to walk holy before God because whatever territory you do not yield to the Father is yielded automatically by the fault to the devil. So if you've got an area in your life that you're just saying, well, you know, Lord, I know I'm unforgiving and I know I'm holding this, this, these, these indictments against these people and they did me wrong, you know, they did me wrong, but I'm holding these indictments because I know you're going to get them one day. That indictment will testify against you before God because if you don't forgive others, God cannot forgive you. Yes. If you don't drop the indictment, there's no way that you're going to be able to walk in the peace and the and the love of God, and feel His presence. Because everything's just going to be all, all confused. Yes. Now, <clears throat> God loves you, but He loves you enough not to leave you where you are. Amen. He wants to see... How many of you would put up with a, with a child just at 2 o'clock in the morning, they get out of the bed... And they decide they're going to run the street for three or four hours and then come back when they want to. How many of you put up with that? How many of you put up with somebody publishing pornography in the basement of your house? How many of you put up with somebody coming to your house and getting drunk and falling out on the floor? Why do you think the Lord's going to put up with that out of us? He is not going to put up with that. And the whole reason he's trying to get us clean is so he can walk with us and have fellowship with us and love us. Amen. I, Amen. Let's, let's back some of this up with some words. How many of you know, you, it don't matter what I say, it only matters what the book says, right? Yeah. I want you guys to turn with me to Revelation 3. Now remember what I said. Now, if you don't recognize that this book is God speaking, and this is where the attack is right now in the American church. It's over the validity of God and His Holy Word. The fight's over this book. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Some folks want to accept it as the Word of God, and some people say it contains the Word of God, and some people just say, I don't know. Yeah. But you've got to settle this before you settle anything else. You've got to recognize that the written Word of God is God speaking to you. Yeah. And there has to be a total, absolute end authority on everything. In other words, if the book is against it, if the Bible is against it, then you've got to stand against it. You've got to stand with the Lord Jesus and His Word. You cannot just come and say, well, Lord, I'm here to be saved, and then Him not do a work in your life. You need God to do a work in your heart. Yes. Right. Now picture this. You're a garden, right? God's putting every one of us, the Word says that we are like a garden. And in that garden's a throne. And whatever you let sit on the throne of your life is going to rule you. Yes. Now you can't have Jesus on the throne in some kind of addiction or some kind of problem or this or that and the other, or a husband or wife or daughter or this or that or anything. 
You've got to have him alone on that throne. First and foremost. Without that, there cannot be the kind of life that God wants you to live. Your life will be in a state of confusion if you've got an idol and the Lord Jesus trying to sit on the same throne. First of all, he won't occupy that. He won't share authority with anybody else. He'll turn you over to that. If that's what you want, he'll turn you over to it. Look over here with me in Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 is where I'm going to start. Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 through 22. It says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. Now this is Jesus talking now. This isn't somebody's idea. This is a revelation of Jesus Christ given to John, who was the closest disciple to the Lord Jesus. How many of you know that? Yes, amen. He says, I know thy works, that thou art neither hot or cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art work lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Yes. Now is he being clear here? And he says, Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Let me say this to you. Humility gets God on the scene. When you go to the throne of God and you say, God, I'm not smart enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not strong enough, but you are. That is humility before the Father. Mm-hmm. Without saying I'm not, you know, I, I'm, how many of y'all are around some intellectuals? Mm-hmm. You, you're around some people that they live in their head. You know, the whole thing is about how they figure it, you know. That will not work. I can take you to the chapter and verse, but John the Baptist said this, no man can receive anything unless it be given to him from heaven. So to sit there and try to figure it out in your intellect is not going to work. You've got to get humble. God, I'm not smart enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not good enough. Now when we come to that, then God can begin to say, okay, I can give grace to that because God gives grace to the humble, but he does what to the proud? He resists the proud, right? Yes. So when we go to the Father, we come to our, you know, we recognize, okay, first of all, I can't hide behind Frank and I can't hide behind Dave. I can't hide behind my pastor here. I, I've got to come open to the throne of God and I've got to say, God, I am what I am. Just like I am. You see me just like I am. And you know and I know that, we are, that I'm not perfect. Only you're perfect. But Lord, I need some help with these problems. Because see, here's the thing. If, if, if you come to God on your own strength, He'll break your strength. If you come to God with your own intellect, He'll destroy your knowledge. If you come to God saying, I'm good enough, He will destroy your righteousness. Because no one stands whole before the Father except for the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And if we're in, we, either, we either are in Him or we are not. Either we're yielding to His righteousness or we are not. There's an exchange that happened at the cross. You exchanged your righteousness for His righteousness. You laid all the good stuff, the bad stuff, everything down on one side of the cross and He gave you all of His righteousness, all His goodness, all His wonderfulness, all His beauty and all His strength. He gave it to you. But He only requires one thing, that you exchange your 70 or 80 for His 100. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. How many of you teacher gave you, a resp- gave you a chance and you had a 70 on a score and I said, listen, all you got to do is just turn your paper in to me and I will give you 100%. How many of you take that offer? Amen. The Lord's doing the same thing. He's giving you the same <laughs> offer. He's saying exchange with me what you can do for what I can do. 